but there was a motorcycle right out in front and the design of that motorcycle looks remarkably like Hot Rod from Transformers. <laughs> Welcome back to Gen Wars, the combative and sometimes agreeable podcast between the Gen Xers and the Millennials. Oh, just Millennials now? Okay. Just Millennials. I've I mean, lost all of my titles. All of my degrading titles are just gone. <laughs> I know you're, <laughs> you, you get ready for them and then I don't say them and you're like, damn it. Damn it. There's nothing more that Millennials love than being self deprecating. Come on. <laughs> So how are you doing, Steven? I'm hanging in. We we have a great show here on the channel, Firehazard 508 Creations. And luckily, you already liked and subscribed, which is great to have. So <laughs> I'm just going to go right into the nice. media plug. Okay. <laughs> well, this episode, we are going to be breaking down Tolerance is Extinction Part 2 of X-Men 97. Um And we've developed a system to talk about this episode to keep us on track. Those topics are nostalgia bias, production value, spirit, intent, and emotional value, rewatchability, and overall thoughts and predictions. Before we get into this, spoiler warning. Get over there and watch the episode because we're going to spoil some stuff. But that being said, Stephen, let's get into the nostalgia bias of it all. The costumes. So we got Dark... Yes. Was that Dark yes. Phoenix? Like, we got the Phoenix costume, which I thought was interesting. No, that was just the old Jean Grey. It was just old Jean Grey? Okay, I was like... Yeah. So th that's a little bit older than what I recall, because I don't think she ever wore that particular set up in the original run, but that's Not really the, really I'm leaning into the comics. Maybe. Yeah, I think she had the full green with the gold sleeves, um, that changes when she's dark Phoenix to more of a red, um, a red inner and then the gold sleeves on it. So, yeah. but yeah, that's, that's old, that's old school X-Men, her old school X-Men uh, yeah. outfit, if you will. I didn't catch costume. why she put that one on. Was her other suit like destroyed or? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So yes, the whole, the whole mansion was destroyed from the fight with the Sentinels Xavier crashing through the roof. Okay, yeah, so that the was whole just place left was just... in the museum-esque part. No, that was... They went to Muir Island, where that's um, Moira's uh, facility okay. on Muir Island. So they they took off to Muir Island, where they had all their gear. They had more blackbirds that they can destroy. Um, <laughs> and they promptly did. There was also something in there. This is... I, I... <laughs> I don't know if anybody other than Gambit rides a motorcycle, but there was a motorcycle right out in front, and the design of that motorcycle looks remarkably like Hot Rod from Transformers. <laughs> if anybody knows what that motorcycle is, or if this was a nod to Transformers and they just stuck that in there, please leave it in the comments because I paused it, rewound, watched it, paused it, and was like... That looks remarkably like Hot Rod in a motorcycle form. Disney so, setting their target you know, just... computer to acquire <laughs> yeah, yeah, another yeah. IP. I was like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so maybe it is. Maybe it was a little nod to it. I don't know. But if yeah, if you know anything about that, please comment below. I'd like to know what that was all about. I'm sure I'll find out in the next couple days. But if you get to it before me. Yeah. We also got the um, red Wolverine costume from that as it's, well i think it's supposed it's supposed to be the brown yellow it's it's brown yellow that's what his burgundy um, wolverine <laughs> that's his his or one of his original uh costumes that have, people have thought that he was going to go back to uh or the the movies that were coming out which we also got a awesome little nod to um i don't know where this falls but i guess in the bias of it all um the or the nostalgia of it all when Cable and Scott are talking and he's giving him the like dad pep talk um, and then he throws out the what do you want us to wear black leather which was the joke from the original <laughs> X-Men yes. movie what do you want us to wear spandex tights yes. or whatever they said something the Uno way, reverse which I was 
<laughs> the Uno reverse. Yep. And I was like, yep, that's that's perfect. A nice little throwback to that. I love that. To that dig. What else we got under nostalgia? Well, we have uh, Magneto with his helmet on and like the old, like uh, Xavier in his like his... military safari esque. Like it was a lot of costuming <laughs> stuff, but but then we're just going into like traditional like dynamic, like the uh, Brotherhood and versus even... the X Men. Like, yep, and Cyclops having his old the old full hood and visor. Yeah. I, I thought that was kind of cool, like, instead of having them just continue on, like, oh, our house is destroyed, and probably a lot of the gear that we had, so let's go, we know we have some others stashed over here, so let's go and uh, get that and kind of bring that back, and, then, you know, next season they'll have all their, they'll look like they normally do, but I thought that was a nice little throwback to everything. Yeah. Um, I, I want to spin this right into production value, because I think this episode did such a good job of giving rationale and reasoning for everything. So like the reason that we're getting all this nostalgic throwback because everything was destroyed. So they got to go get the old stuff out of the attic because that's, that's where, where it was. (laughs) Um, They immediately answered my concerns about like Magneto sending it to the shadow realm and where we're in the the dark ages and people rioting and, and losing their absolute marble. Um, I thought it was very interesting that, like, it's reversible. I question the world building mechanics on that, but whatever. I don't, I don't know how that works, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna let them let them figure that one out. They got one episode to to kind of address that and uh, those concerns and move forward with it. Right, but like the production value here in storytelling, making sure like I don't know if this episode specifically set out to like, hey, we're gonna make sure there's no little plot holes for people to nitpick us on like even with um forge coming out, i was like how is your leg working this is how it's working i'm going to address this right out um yeah it, it was it was every single time i was like oh they, they just straight up addressed it that was fantastic um, yeah i was pretty pretty pleased in that uh that they that they saw those plot holes um, and didn't just ignore them and didn't just let them slide and move forward. Like this was the section that I'm, I was thinking about this, not knowing what I'm going to talk about. The show is great. The action is great. They've put the money, the time, the effort into the writing, the action scenes, and even those just everyone standing around shots. Those are still great. And they're acted so well. Like I don't have a lot to say other than it's awesome in the production value. So at least like, um, you found something to point out that the production value where they've filled in those plot holes and they've made sure to cover their bases. So you and I aren't sitting here going, well, well. actually, <laughs> <laughs> I you missed this like one, that. guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, how does that I didn't work? like that. <laughs> There's a, another one, too. And that's why I put it in all caps is like, that's how you address plot holes. Morph was like, hey, I thought everything was fu- broken. Like, why? Can the mm-hmm. the uh, Sentinels move around? It's like, oh, he must be powering them with his powers. It's like perfect, and like they had him landlined, kind of like more like Ava's from Evangelion. Yes. So there's like limitations to it. So it's like, ah, yes, this is that's the sauce that I want to see. It's just like one line, one little throwaway line. Star Wars, take notes because like that is <laughs> everything for me as someone that's trying to be really immersed in it. And you kind of have to put some hokey yeah. dialogue in there if you're not going to show it. Like if you're gonna have to go the yeah. tell route, do it in a way that's pretty organic. Yeah. It's great. Like the, the like morph is like, why the hell are there sentinels and why are they working? And Forge answering because his powers are similar to to, yeah. to Bastion. Yeah, yeah. So like it, it it all made sense. It was just really 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 good. I guess I part of production value that I didn't uh I wasn't thinking about. I was kind of. And lost in the all the storytelling. He was in the, all, He was so. just like ah, the visuals. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, the visuals. Oh my god. <laughs> a, a lot of like extra like line work and layers of uh, I don't want to call them particle effects, but like that's essentially what mm. they're trying. Like you've got like the Magneto's energy blast. You've got a lot of the Gene energy blast. Um, did she get eradicated? That that's something for predictions in the future. But like all of those scenes were really really good. Um, mm. and, and before we leave production value, the the line of like the modest goddess routine was 
Yes. I love that. Yes, I love yes, that. Yes, that was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> um, I'm going to put, and I, I spoke to you about this before we started, but that the in-between frames, this is an animation thing that, uh, you know, some people may not pick up on, but I'm going to put it up on the screen right now of Cable, the in-between frame of him shooting and just the line work, and it is bananas. I thought it, man, I can't say enough good things about that. So I guess that that's something that does fall into production value, but I didn't catch it until I was making the thumbnail for this episode, and I saw how I happened to stop and landed right on that frame, and I was like, holy <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Just like we have production value here and Nick making all those thumbnails, you can fund our production value by going to the Funky Store, Funky.Store, and picking up some nostalgia merch. We, like, we're, we're having a great time here. It's 1997, and, and things are infinitely better than they are today um, for, for whatever reason that might be. And uh, you can go back with uh, the nostalgia merch over at Funky.Store so Nick can make more thumbnails uh, to the degree that he wants to. We love that. Yes, let's go and make all the thumbnails. It's <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> um, so that being moving into the spirit, intent, and emotional value of this episode, what are we? What do you got for for this one? So this section. I really liked that everybody stayed true to character. I think there was like Magneto and Rogue are just like dunzo like they they everything is ruined why not just take it to its like finale and and, and i even, i really enjoyed her like, tackling wolverine while he's trying to stop like she's actively now against the team yeah um with with magneto yeah like like we're we're looking at a clash of like impossible juxtaposition of the situation like like why would Sunspot want to keep fighting when his own mother just like put him in chains, <laughs> like literally collared him? Yeah. I think I, yeah, yeah. I think that was his line. It's like my mother basically put that on me. Like she she collared me herself. Yeah. And, and it was very interesting though how they took that. He did go off with Magneto and was like, "I'm gonna go. This is a better opportunity for me." But also, when still fighting Jubilee, was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't mean this. Well, it speaks <laughs> like, to his naivete, like, like, yeah, our, absolutely. Th- to yeah. think that there's no consequences to that is like, what are you committing to? He doesn't know. This is his first rodeo, no. literally. Yeah, Rogue has been, Rogue's done this rodeo. Yeah, Rogue she's flip flopped, not necessarily against the team, but just like her changing worldview, <laughs> especially within yeah. the last like week or month or whatever it's been like <laughs> yeah 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 but yeah there... she's had a, a lot thrown at her yeah um this is i guess this falls into the well, i don't know where this would fall into but it, we'll talk about it now i thought it was interesting that she just woke up from a coma she just woke up from getting wrecked and then they were like all right you get on the plane we're going and you're like D- maybe she needs a minute <laughs> And that's kind of part of it. Like, she's like, I don't want to play the role of peacekeeping X-Men because that's not Mm. where I'm at anymore. And then do you just expect me to do that? It's not going to happen. She had her arms crossed and was not very pleased about any of that during that whole, like, round table, round, you know, uh, uh, family meeting they had in the the living room there. Yeah. And I love that nobody gave Xavier a pass either. It was like it's like, dude, you yeah. kind of like really screwed us here playing patty cake with your what? What was his line? Oh, uh, oh I oh I wrote it down. Hold on. Oh, uh, did I write it down? I with his with your bird girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, basically. Your... Like <laughs> okay, uh, when you abandoned us for your she are bird queen. Is the <laughs> she are <line>. bird queen. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a beautiful line. Because then don't later on have when he... any like bird like that that's just kind of like a fourth wall thing isn't it other than her sister death bird right i don't know the queen being anything related to a bird yeah, or yeah, have any yeah. bird I, I thought that was a great thing <laughs> comment below if you know more about the shiar because i know yeah zero. i know diddly <laughs> besides they're they're basically the uh 
Viltrumites. Oh, yes. Yes. Which I need to finish that, too. I'm I two haven't seen back. it. <laughs> oh, my God. Go watch it. It's fantastic. Um, all right. So uh, anything else in spirit, intent, and emotional value? He has his hand raised. Yes, you in the front. So. <laughs> I have a question. I'm going to approach <laughs> the bench. Um, why is this at Magneto's fault? They, they kept blaming is- him like he did something wrong. In the sense that I, he was running the school poorly. Like, what? I, I guess not in the way that Xavier would have run it. That up, where they up were until the more... point of he was caught in a terrorist attack, there was no problems. And he didn't do anything until he escaped and just EMP'd everything. So, like, why is this, like, oh, you're running the school wrong. Like, Xavier wouldn't have done it this way. Like, when you weren't saying that earlier, Mm. Mm. he he was running it pretty spick and span, like, staying pretty true to Xavier's dream up until he EMP'd the Earth, which, like, having qualms with that is fine, but, like... Are they saying that he was? Re- I mean, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like read. I'm trying to remember the dialogue in that. Was that during when Scott and Jean were having a conversation with Xavier? It was a couple or... of times. It was like brought up several okay. times. Like, I guess I just assumed it was Magneto has put us in this position. Right. In the oh no, everything's gone to uh-huh. position with the EMP blast and all that. But that stopped um, the unstoppable sentinel. So I like it it's it's a hard like if they hadn't like initially like gone at him, like, hey, like, can we work on like stopping the sentinels together and then un the world? And they didn't even approach it like that. They were just like, Magneto, you rat, you you did this and he's like Okay, you know what? I'm not even going to help you now. I was like, send him down. <laughs> like, well, I mean, this is also the second time uh, that they've kind of he's been caught up in a to do, and he he he's kind of damned if he do does, and he damned if he doesn't. Like, yeah. he's he's kind of that figure where no matter what he does, it's going to be looked bad upon. I think that's where that lands. Um, I, I get it. Cause they even had the, the, the line where blast. Magneto's like, every God leaves the people who believe in them or something like that. Um, there's also and another good line. He's like, I, I held him down the, that, the, that he's not a God. Right. Well, I held <laughs> this boy that like, I watched him just get vaporized. He's like, you should have been there. Like, like mm. to me, it's framing the storyline where you're kind of like what is Xavier doing like what's what's what besides try to save everybody but there's still so much irreparable damage done because like even if the power comes back on like the humans are gonna lose their marbles and and the the mutants are gonna have anywhere to stay like it's it's kind of done a lot of damage a lot of damage control yeah there's gonna be a lot of damage control trying to fix fix all of this rewatchability rewatch but yes rewatchability <laughs> i again i've already spun through the at least the fight scenes um grabbing some stills and whatnot for the thumb so very high on rewatchability for me for sure yeah i i think seeing it within the trilogy because it's a three-parter right mm-hmm. yeah yeah so, like, re-watching the trilogy, I'll maintain that stance. Like, after it, it's all cohesively there, like, watching it right through will be very mm. bonkers. Um, I'm highly recommending it to everyone that I know, and I would happily sit down and watch the entire series with any of us uh, in, in the crew that, that want to go through it and talk about it. Um, but I think this one has a lot of debatable points just because you are finally kind of pitting the same end goal like ends justifies the means mm-hmm. like there's, there's a lot of like theory to it or like philosophy to it and so like rewatching it to really like strengthen whatever argument you're going to take with it like that that's that's what i'm going to be doing <laughs> well now i'm going to start re- i'm going to rewatch it with that thought in mind of like w- 
what are they actually blaming Magneto for? Right. And and seeing where that, excuse me, seeing what what that actually like uh, because again I may I maybe I'm misconstruing what they're blaming him for, um, but yeah. th- I, I, that would help in the rewatchability to solidify that. Um, to make sure that we we're on the same page. Yeah, because well, if I'm I understand the, the timeline, if he doesn't do that in that moment, all mutants are enslaved, and the humans yeah. slowly die out, and then you have the cyber race or whatever it is that he's created. Yeah. So he has to do the global Something. EMP. The, yeah, because there's no time left. Like even if Xavier touched down, like he would have just been swarmed and taken. Yeah, because the only reason that the, he stands a chance to even organize and regroup is because this time is bought. So I don't know why they don't approach Magneto in more of a sense of like, OK, let's make a plan to get this together because we got 12 hours. And it's just like immediately like, God damn it, Magneto, <laughs> you, you, you rat, you, you've done it again. And he's like, OK, yeah, no, yeah, I didn't do anything wrong. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so this goes into the overall thoughts and predictions section. Is that um, my thought is that we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna what you were just saying there? They're gonna turn Magneto at least for the moment, because if not, all humanity is dead. Everybody, they're they're gonna they they're gonna figure out how to turn him to go against Bastion and the Sentinel situation. And quell that, and then we're going to, my prediction is leading, at least we're going to be fighting Magneto for a portion of season two. At least, if not the beginning part, whatever that looks like, there's going to be a, let's figure that out. I would hate to see that, um, just personally, because I think you've, you've, you've done the, 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 the step that you okay. don't take when you want redemption or like re- like Wolverine may have killed Magneto. I don't know if he survives that hit. That was also a thought that I had, but I don't know to what extent Magneto can recover from things like that. Right. I don't know what his And even if he does, like is like okay, like your X-Men is completely willing to kill me at any time. Yeah. Like, like that's yeah. that's the point of kind of no return. And whatever that animantium rip happens, I know that's happened in a lot of different um, iterations of X Men. Like that usually has dire consequences for for Wolverine. Like pretty much every no, time. No, I don't think. I don't think so. I I I believe, if I'm not mistaken, his healing factor could can overcome that and. He's still just going to have bone claws and whatever. Like, I think he mm-hmm. will be able to survive that. It ain't going to be pleasant, that's for sure. But right. I think he can survive it. No, he can. Like, I think that's the old Logan, like, kind of mentality. But, like, he he has, like, we've crossed, like, lines of mutual respect. Because Magneto mm. could have done that at any time. I think Wolverine's the only one that would have pulled the trigger like he did. Right, but now now given, Magneto has done that, so like like there's just no way that they're working yeah. together. And um, and that, Xavier crossed the line, so there's lots of lines crossed here that just like it, it would be imp- like impossible to like Scott crossed the line with like blasting Xavier, like Xavier crossed the line, like going into Magneto's brain, and it's. But m- my my only thought against that is. We've he dropped the line. I watched the 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 eyes of a child die in front of me. It, like the the life go from uh, what was his name, the little green guy with the hat. I'm putting it in the bottom because I don't remember his name. It was like Squeak or yeah. Squirm or something like that. But <clears throat> that took a toll on him. He was literally holding a. a, a small child mutant in his arms and it died and he told him he was going you know he was trying to save him Mm -hmm. that if nothing else is and maybe it's not a he's just trying to scoop the mutants and leave like he 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 doesn't view humans as viable anymore no but i could see him destroying bastion for the for the sole purpose that you have relinquished the lives of 
thousands of mutants and I was there and I held one while you were trying to kill me as well. So Ma Magneto using his as everything in his power. Yes, he is fighting the X-Men, but he is going to wreck Bastion. This yeah. might not be a X-Men victory. This might be a Magneto victory over this bad guy at the moment. That That's why I'm saying that season two will be leading into us. The us. Uh, I'm not part of the X-Men. I am in spirit. <laughs> we, we are part um, of <laughs> We are X-Men. <laughs> we are X-Men. Oh, um, small that, note as a follow-up, yep. not to derail you. They did address... Um, morphs pronouns correctly in the I was, show and i think that was the first time um that at least i caught i was gonna bring that so, up fully yep. correcting all previous statements <laughs> um, oh the, the trauma yeah, transforming so, into sinister must have been weird as well <laughs> yeah yes uh that and hulk that was awesome mm. i love that we just get a, a morph just turn tra transforming and, and having a morph smash moment I thought that was awesome. Yes, um, they are doing uh, the those those nuggets of uh, most most of them have been morph, but then obviously we get the Captain America and stuff. We get to drop those little nuggets is is absolutely fantastic. Um, and that you know who knows we may get some Hulk or Avengers or some point in time since we have had Cap. I, I'm not saying we, but I don't think we will, but maybe he is part of the team that. Cap said he he has uh, at the ready, maybe, maybe. But, uh, yeah, I, I I'm aligning with a full Magneto victory. I think that would be a very interesting storyline. Um, to just kind of that'd be Put really. The bad guy I don't over. think they would ever do that. But just like have him, just like nope, not helping you. Blam, going over to Bastion. Blam, gone, and then like peace out. I'm leaving, and then then seeing because I, I guess that does kind of lean into like some of the uncanny x-men stuff because wasn't there like like the island like cave person aesthetic to that and whatnot at some points i don't know what i can't even remember and not ignore me I, I i'm off on some kind of okay. like parallel dimension tangent that they could take this on and I don't, if you I, know what steven's talking about comment below <laughs> steven doesn't know what he's talking oh, about man. it's been a day um, day, but I, 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 I would, I would enjoy seeing the the uh, Magneto overcoming all everybody and coming out on top at the end of the day. And season two, now we're left with the wreckage of the Sentinels, the people that turned into Sentinels, the outage of. The, the world and figuring out how to fix that if it if it doesn't get fixed in Magneto's conquering of everything and taking off on Planet M part two. Yeah, because because so. apparently like it's not just like an EMP of like electrical stuff is out where it could be like repaired or turned on like the the magnetic fields of the earth are just like off or whatever. So it's just like, yeah, which is yeah, which is very interesting. Um so I was watching somebody on YouTube and they even said that they showed uh, the, a nuclear power plant guys scrambling to get that back online, which is real bad if that goes down and there's no backup power and nuclear power plants are going down. So maybe we'll see some new mutants show up that ha can absorb ooh, mm. havoc. Oh, havoc. Scott's oh. brother. Oh, mm. that. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm liking things. Uh, I don't know if it, he can absorb nuclear power, but I know he's. I think he can absorb that. I don't know. Again, I don't know what skill I'm check. talking about. It's <laughs> skill check. <laughs> um. Also, uh, uh, Cable oh. having telekinesis. Yes, that is a that is a thing. That's been. A I'm thing? just happy that they. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's just never yeah, been. I'm just happy in the that show. they. I don't know. Okay. Not this not this season, but maybe right. uh maybe they addressed it in the other seasons, but yes, he he's always had telekinetic. He was he's deemed one of the most powerful mutants for that reason alone. Right. But he just doesn't I guess we don't we haven't seen it here. Right. Um but I'm happy that they did show it. Um and as you saw he she could barely hold him back. 
and she was getting wrecked. Yeah. Um, another prediction that I had, uh, they, the Forge's leg situation. I have a feeling the electrostatic reflector. I don't know what that means, what that has to do with anything, but I have a feeling it might come back. That that would they be were a like, good like TI I had and he's, resolution. Yeah. And he was like tink 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 and then they pull it in a close up and he dink 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 it a couple more times. Yeah, and they were like soldering stuff, so they have ways to like rebuild a technology and stuff. So Yeah. I, I, and and forge it, it beast even asked him, "How do you, how did you come up with that?" And he goes, "I thought of it." And you're like, "You son of a bitch." <laughs> but that's enough. But that's enough to call yeah, out. <laughs> that's that one line. I thought of it. I mean, that's what you do. And so, yeah, between the two of them, um, I think that that is that might come into play again. That that's one of those little potential foreshadow nuggets that they drop. And I was like, I, I'm after watching nine episodes of this, I'm like, pick up on the little things like mm-hmm. that might be a thing. So I've added that in my notes as to maybe that comes back. Who knows? Uh, anything else in the uh, overall thoughts, predictions? Uh, I, I will that say that like I think address this is the most stumped I've been. Like, I, it, this is really good story writing. I think we can't iterate it enough, but we're going to try. Um, I, I have no idea. I feel like they've they've gone to so many points of no return um, that mm. this I I will be engaged and thrilled on seeing the epic conclusion of this three part series. I, I don't think I've felt that since childhood. A, like truly, I'm in like in a while. Yeah, this is really compelling. This is really interesting. They're making decisions that push. It, it kind of limits them in what they can do that isn't like un believable i i don't know i'm just i'm just really i'm really into it but i'm also really like i don't what's gonna happen next i don't know yeah, like yeah. i've absorbed that's, so uh, much content the... like this i i don't i haven't been in this position a long time and then thrust in the position to try to come up with some sort of thought and prediction as to where it's gonna go well yeah well th- and that's always like an, a mental exercise that i do is like I, I i like being right like me being right is my favorite pastime uh, if you want to know anything about my personal, like, being around me is probably pretty rough. But uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy being correct. And um, if I could make a prediction and, and be wrong, or, like, I, I can't. Like, I'm just, like, really, like, stumped onto where yeah, they're going to, like, how good, are they going to get out of this? Because I, I just don't think you can convert Magneto unless they just, like, go with Xavier's plan where you just, like, possess his body and fix it. And then Magneto's, like gives the middle finger and flies off into space like <laughs> yeah but now he's got the 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 head the helmet on him and and uh as i, I wrote down magneto's going full super saiyan like he's this i i i'm now i'm fully on board with magneto is going going off on his own he is going to destroy he's going to wreck the x-men and leave them in in shambles and figuring out how to pick up from that He's going to wreck Bastion and maybe just flick Sinister away because Sinister is coming back. We know that Bastion, we probably won't see him again, but he's going to send him sailing and then he's going to take off on his planet and repopulate that. However, he will. will come back with Magneto at some point. That's where I'm leaning with this one. Yeah, I, so I think we're going like to get a the bad guy that. victory at the end. Well, is it about, again For like I'm less like. What has he done it's, it's, technically wrong? <laughs> like, no, no, no. I guess, but we, for the most part, Magneto tends to land as an adversary against the X Men. So for sure, I put him in the if you had a good guy and a bad guy category, he lands a little more in the bad guy category. Sometimes in the weird, ambiguous zone in the middle. Um, but that's you know, it's it's the it's the heel. In wrestling, again, bringing it back to wrestling, it's the heel winning winning the title when you're like, oh, the good guys are going to win. And nope, oh, they swerved you at the end. And you're like, ooh, ooh, good storytelling. So yes. now we're setting, <laughs> up for, <laughs> setting up for season two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's going to be like they're in the dark ages. They're going to have to figure it out. Um, I'm assuming like Earth won't like fall out of rotation and into like the sun or whatever. But yeah. something akin to like the X-Men are going to be left very undermanned under underwhelmed and and have to figure yeah. it out 
We're gonna have to do some Superman like. Oh dang it! The She-Ra there. are gonna show up. That dang it! They're just gonna fix it. <laughs> dang it! You think so? Maybe. Do you think they have the powers to do that? Probably. I don't know what they have their powers to do anything. So, but that's a oh they do have Gladiator and they can terraform I believe. I think they talked about terraforming at some point. They might. You might be right about that. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> See, we keep talking about it. We're going to figure it out eventually. We're going to figure it out. <laughs> well, that's why you subscribe to both our channels, because we're going to figure it out together as a group. We appreciate all the views and, and all the interactions that we get on this on this channel. Um, Nick, Firehazard 508 Creations, he makes play things into display things, but he's also with me, um, this chucklehead millennial uh, that plays video games because all I have is nostalgia, and all I, I grasp onto is the fields of nostalgia, every little blade of that grass, where we play through quintessential video games over on Funky Games, so I appreciate if you can have the time, the spare moment, to go over and check out my channel. Excellent. Well, thank you guys again for joining us on another action-packed fun conversation of x-men 97 episode 8 tolerance is tolerance is extinction part 2 make sure you come back next week for tolerance is extinction part 3 where we wrap this story up for the season and will lead us into season 2 so thanks again and we'll catch you in the next one bye bye